Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. This time we're going to look at measuring Zener diodes and this has come about because of a problem I encountered when I was refurbishing an early 1970s power supply. I'll put a link up there to the video regarding that power supply. I got some measurements um, uh, off one of the components in that power supply that didn't seem to make a lot of sense and when I investigated a bit further uh, I began to realise that actually the component was okay. What was suspect was my method of, method of testing. So this video is about devising another method and the results that uh, we then got. So let's start by taking a look at um, the measuring systems that I was using and the results I was getting. OK, let's make a start by having a look at the results that I got and um, why I was a little bit confused. So here's a view uh, of the curve tracer on my Hameg oscilloscope. If you want to know more about that scope, I'll put a review uh, up at up the top there. You can read about that scope. It's an old analog scope, but it has a built-in curve tracer. So if I just put the curve tracer probes onto a conventional diode, we get that very distinctive uh, knee shape and that's the, um, the 0.6 volt approximately uh, voltage of the uh, diode in its, uh, in its reverse bias. And that, that's the classic shape you'd expect from a diode. So let's have a look now at a Zener diode. Um, and again, we still get that same uh, sharp uh, upward going uh, trace, which is uh, the conventional diode function. But then to the left we've got another knee and the distance from uh, the edge of that knee essentially is the is the voltage of the Zener. In this case this is a 4.7 volt Zener. So that's what I'd expect. Conventional diode like such, Zener diode like such. So now let's have a look at the diode that was the problem. This is actually the original diode from the power supply and it comes out as a diode even though the circuit board said it was a Zener. Now I had a problem getting hold of a schematic for this but it was pretty certain it was a Zener because there was plenty of other diodes that were marked as D. So initially I thought it was rather strange so then I popped it onto uh, one of these cheap and cheerful component checkers and uh, the component tester also said that it was a diode. So there's clearly something going on there that's not right. So what can that be? Um, well fairly quickly I worked out that the problem wasn't the component, it was actually the, the method of measurement. So let's just have a look at what this curve trace is actually doing. Okay, so I mentioned the, that the Hameg analog scope has got a built-in curve tracer function. So let's just have a look what this is, and these are the two probes from it. So let's just have a look at what's actually going on. Um, and what, what these probes have actually uh, got on them in terms of a signal. So I've got them attached to my um, digital scope and if I just connect them up we've got a stable waveform uh, which is actually 50 Hertz so they're just making use of um, uh, rectified mains there to, uh, to drive the curve tracer which, which is fine that's quite a, a common way of doing it if you want to have a scour around the internet there's plenty of information about curve tracers and simple circuits you can build and they are quite useful um, so yeah that's all good I've got this AC signal but how how big is it and um, the answer to that's relatively simple I'll pop a couple of cursors on and we've got here 12.5 um, volts is the uh, is the peak voltage there from from zero which is the the bit that the curve tracer will be using. So uh, that leads me to think that um, the diode I'm checking, if the if the Zener voltage is greater than 12 volts, I'm unlikely to get a result because the um, probes will never output sufficient voltage to actually reach that that second uh, Zener knee. And uh, I think that indeed is the problem. So let's now have a look at how we might get over that and there are more than, uh, I mean there's quite a few ways to actually measure um, the uh, forward voltage of, of Zeners but uh, there's just a couple of uh, a couple here that I'm going to show you. So I'm going to start first of all with a with a quick and dirty method and, um, and then we'll have a look at something that's a little bit uh, 
more refined shall we say and I think gives me a better result. Okay so here's a, a quick and dirty method which which may be good enough um, if you just want a rough idea. So what, we've, what we're going to do is we've got um, uh, 30 volt power supply uh, with the multimeter across it but uh, what's quite important here is I've got a 10k uh, resistor as a current limiting device and it's quite important you do that because you can very easily destroy your Zener diode if you didn't do that and uh, there was uncontrolled current. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to now connect the Zener between ground and that resistor and just see what happens to the voltage drop when I do that and we get 4.66 volts and this is a 4.7 volt Zener so yeah we're getting a, a reasonable result there um, not exactly um, smack on 4.7 but certainly gives you a good idea so that's um, that's the principle now here's the actual diode that I removed from the um, power supply so I'm now going to just quickly connect that across it's going to hold it on because the wires have got solder on the end and the result we get there is 17.9 volts so aha this is an 18 volt Zener so the reason that we're not getting any kind of uh, result on the curve tracer is because the voltage on the curve tracer is only just over 12 so you would never expect it to read um, an 18 volt Zener. Now since uh, I took the I recorded the video um, on the power supply I've got some replacement diodes and I managed to get uh, well I could get 10 of them for a, not very much so here's one of the replacements uh, that came that I've now got in stock and that's saying 17.2 volts um, so again that's checking out um, as you might expect. I was quite fortunate with this Zener in that it actually still had the markings on and they were still readable. It had been very hot so I was slightly concerned I wasn't going to be able to get a, a sensible result of that and I couldn't get hold of a schematic so I wasn't able to actually test it but that confirms now without question we've got a Zener here that's around about um, 18 volts and that I, that's what I've replaced it with and the power supply is working rather well. Um, so well in fact that it's actually um, supplying the power for this test which is sort of rather nice. So that searched through a few electronic magazines and various articles over the years and um, from a couple of magazines from over 40 years ago I found a couple of methods of testing Zeners and so I've adapted one of those. So let's just have a look at the circuit. Here's the circuit of the Zener tester then and the astute amongst you will have spotted fairly quickly it's uh, very simply a comparator circuit using an op amp uh, which is exactly what it is so what we've essentially got is a 10k potentiometer acting as a variable voltage divider feeding the inverting input of the op amp on pin 2 between um, the uh, input of the non-inverting input we've got a 4k7 resistor and the Zener diode in question to be tested and that also forms a voltage divider so if we adjust the potentiometer until we just see the LED that's been driven by pin 1 uh, switch on, find that threshold point, uh, that should mean that the voltage on pin 2 is equal to the voltage on pin 3, um, as long as we um, are fairly precise about where that threshold is. And that should be quite a, a sudden event because we're using the full gain of the op-amp, so I would expect the LED to to switch on uh, very very suddenly and to switch off very suddenly. Now the original circuit which is from a magazine well over 40 years ago um, was based was slightly different to this but um, also made use of the 741 op amp which was a classic op amp but um, not uh, th there's better things come out since then in the ensuing uh, the ensuing decades. So I'm just using the TL072, but that's simply because I've got one handy. Any, any op-amp uh, should uh, be able to do this kind of thing. Now, back in the uh, late 70s, uh, getting access to um, an accurate digital meter wasn't quite as easy as it is now. Um, so the suggestion in the little circuit was that you put some marks on the potentiometer scale 
to show the various voltages so that, you know used a couple of known voltage zeners to, to sort of calibrate it now of course the um, whilst that's fine uh, and was probably quite good 40 odd years ago obviously if the supply voltage varies then um, that calibration that we've scribbled on there would no longer be valid um, so uh, what I've done is taken the completely pragmatic approach and once we've got the LED just at the threshold I'm going to put a meter across the wiper of that potentiometer to ground measure that voltage and that should be telling me the um, the working voltage of the uh, Zener diode in question. So that's the circuit, pretty simple. Now people have asked if they can, if I can spend a little more time showing you a layout of things like this on the breadboard. So um, this is my first attempt at that. So here is the circuit laid out on the breadboard. Uh, we've got uh, supply rail positive and supply rail negative for the op amp. We've got supply rail positive and supply rail negative for the um, potentiometer. And the output of the potentiometer, the wiper, goes along the um, the green wire into the non-inverting input on the op amp, as you can see there. And the output of the op amp on pin one goes through an LED to ground. Um, and then the uh, non-inverting input, um, which is to that uh, orange wire, uh, goes to another voltage divider. We've got a 4.7k resistor going up to the positive rail which is there and the Zener diode to be tested simply fits between the ground rail and the, the center point of um, of that 4.7k uh, 4, uh, 4 resistor. So that's the circuit um, in theory and laid out on the breadboard. Uh, let's see what happens in practice. Okay so here's the circuit uh, laid out on the breadboard. Uh, I've got uh, the 4.7 volt Zener uh, in the test position here and essentially all we need to do is adjust this um, potentiometer until we find the threshold where the LED um, switches on and then I've got the meter reading across the um, voltage divider of that potentiometer and that should give us a, an indication of the Zener voltage. So I'm going to start reducing because it clearly isn't 16 volts and I'm just going to work my way down until the LED lights up, which is quite abrupt. Um, there we go. So it's on there and it's off there. So I'm going to really gently come back a little bit until we find that trigger point. There we go. And that, if I'd come back a little tiny bit till it just goes out, it, it's very, very um, fine adjustment. Um, really, I'm not turning that very far. Um, okay, and we're getting about 4.78 volts. So, yep, no question that's a 4.7 volt Zener. So, let's now um, have a look at the component that I removed from the power supply. And I'm going to pop that in there, and I'm going to just connect it directly to the, to the ground rail, simply because that's just easier, because the leads are seen better days and now we need to uh, wind the voltage right up so she's gone out there at 19 I'm going to start coming back again it's a very very fine adjustment but we're hopefully going to get uh, something tripping in there we go so at about 17.9 there we go 18.6 there yeah so I think it's safe to say that's an 18 volt Zener. Yeah, 17.88. And just for completeness sake, let's get one of the replacements that I, I, I got hold of. And we'll pop that in as well. Again, I'm just going to connect it directly to the earth rail. So um, it's just easy with the shape of the wires. And you can see the light did actually LED did actually momentarily light then, so it's very close to the threshold. There we go. Just turn it back a little bit. Yep. So it's about 17 and a half volts the replacement. Um, so this. Uh, I think these are what they call new all stock components, so I guess they're um, 
they've been, they've been sitting around for quite a while. So there we go, that's the method of testing using the um, op-amp comparator, which I think gives us perhaps a slightly more accurate measurement than the just the crude resistor as a current limiter. However, both methods do work, and the really nice thing about using the comparator is we've um, just reminded ourselves of, uh, of what you can do with op-amps along the way. Okay, well there you have it, that's a method of testing higher voltage Zener diodes and it certainly solved my little uh, measurement uh, quandary which I'm pleased about and it also allowed me to make sure I bought the right component. Now I've actually done a video on uh, the way op amps work so I'll put a link up there to that if you want to have a look, you might find that useful and you could argue that my um, op amp comparator method of uh, checking a Zener is a bit over the top I wouldn't argue with that. Um, I quite enjoyed uh, building that circuit and it was a nice little bit of revision on how op amps can work as comparators. So a little bit of electronics to learn along the way as well. Thanks very much for watching. Um, if you've liked it, please click the thumbs up. That really helps me. Um, be great also if you could subscribe. If you want to click the bell icon, you'll get notified uh, when the next video comes out, uh, which, which would also help me. And we look forward to see you on the next video.